In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can paint multiple vertical or horizontal bars on the screen as a backdrop for a title. Please look at the following example, and then we'll show you one way in which you can accomplish this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take a bar and put it on the screen and then we'll replicate it. But one of the things I need to figure out is my timing. And the more I edit in PowerDirector, the more I value timeline markers. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to figure out about where I want these to start to paint the screen. So let's go in, I'll use my time code and let's say, let's go in three seconds and zero frames. Now I'm going to right click and click add timeline marker. I don't need to label it. I'll just click on OK. Now here's where you can decide what the pace will be. I'm going to go maybe half a second. So I'm going to add 15 to the time code and press enter. Right click and add a timeline marker and click on OK. And then let's go 4, 15, press enter. And then I'm going to right click and choose a timeline marker again. And then I'm going to go back to four zero. Do another one, add a timeline marker. And so we're going to do them. I'm going to add a couple more. I'm going to pause the recording while we add a, a few more. And in this case, I'm pacing them half a second or 15 frames apart. So I've added more timeline markers than I probably need, but there's no problem with that. So now we'll take our little graphic, our yellow graphic that we're going to be using, which I created in Photo Director. I'll drag it down to track number two. And you, all you see is it's a yellow bar on the screen. I need to change a couple things about it. So first of all, before I replicate it, I'm going to simply press the F2 key to get into my editor. Let's change a couple things about it. I'm going to dial the opacity back to maybe 55%. And I also want to click on the animation tab at the very top. This is a new feature we can use on these kinds of objects now. And I'm going to take the in animation and make it a brush 17. And we're going to have the animation duration to start at half a second. This will have to change later and I'll show you why. So I'll click on OK. Now the first one I want to position on the left side of the screen, so I'll do that. And now we have our first bar. So we're going to have to duplicate that. But one thing I find is I'm going to need some more timelines I can use. I already have a title and music here which I have uh, made invisible for this part of the tutorial. So, but I'm going to need some more lines below track number two. So I simply right click, choose Add Tracks. And I want some tracks. Uh, let's just take maybe four of them. And I don't need any audio tracks. I'll zero that out. I wish that the fault was zero. We'll leave it at above track four. I'll click on OK. Now I've got my extra tracks I can use. Now that I have my first one on the screen, what I'm going to do is copy it. I just highlight it, do Control C, move to the track below, do Control V. And here's where my timeline markers come in. I will put it up against the one above it. We'll move to track number four. Do control V to paste again. And we'll snap it to the left. And we'll do one more. Control V to paste and we'll snap it to the left. So now I have these, they are all on top of each other. So I'm gonna take the fifth one and we'll move it over just for now. We'll take the fourth one move it over and the one on track number three and move it over. So what we need to do is line them up next to each other. So I'll take my track three and the pink lines will show up when it's exactly against the other one. We'll go down to track number four. We'll do the same, move it over. And then we'll do the last one and move that over. We could use, it depends on how wide you want, you, you can determine how you want these to look. Looks like I need to adjust the one over here. Okay, now that I have them, what we're going to see if we play, 
is each of them will come in and they slide in consecutively. Now one of the other things that we need to do now is make sure that they are all the same length. I'm going to make them the length of the title and this will change the animation. So I'm going to take the bottom one and drag it so I match my title. And we'll do the same with the other ones. We're going to lengthen them. A problem that happens when you lengthen uh, something like this and it has animation on it, that the animation is going to change in proportion to the length of the title. The way to fix that is you start with the first one. And here, all I need to do is take this, and I love the timeline markers because they give me a distance. And so I'm going to make this start and, and come in in exactly 15 seconds. So we'll drag the beginning, the in animation on that one, and make it that long. Now we're going to go to the second one, double click to get into my PIP designer. And then we're going to take this and make this also 15 seconds. You notice the time code. Let's do the third one the same way. Double click, get into the PIP designer, and we'll drag it right back to the timeline marker. And the last one will do the same thing. Unfortunately, it does change when you extend the length of these. Whoops, I got a little bit off here. There we go. All right. Now, if I look at these, what I am going to have is I'm going to have each of them come in and they should come in consecutively. They should paint the screen from top to bottom. One, two, three, four. Now I have the width. Now if I need it wider, obviously I could. And I think in this particular case, I need to add one more track to match the width of my title. So that's an easy thing to do. I'll just right click and we'll copy the last one. We'll go into track six, do control V to paste. We'll butt it up against our timeline marker. We'll double click on it again, make sure we have the, the time perfect for the introduction here. That looks good. Click on OK. And now we have these different panels sliding down from the top, painting the screen. So the next thing I need to do is I need to take the last one and move it. And now I'm going to turn my title on. So let's begin again. And now that I have the bars and I've activated the title to make it visible, we'll play this and we'll have the bars come on the screen. And then the title pops in. So that's one method of painting bars on the screen as a backdrop for a title in CyberLink PowerDirector.